Good morning guys. We are back again. Today, we're gonna be going over four different transmission types. What you need to know, what you don't know, So today I'm going to show you what I've experienced, what I've learned, what all my research has told me. This video will be a little boring if you are not interested in swapping your transmission or knowing information about your transmission. So if you're just here because you like us, uh, thank you. And um, hopefully you can get through the whole thing. But this is mostly going to be me talking and drawing on the board about all the information that I know. There's a good chance you've ended up on this video because you've heard that the AT545 is the doom transmission and you want to swap it or your transmission has taken a crap on you and same thing here we are again looking to swap a transmission so here we go the first transmission the one that we have the one that is doomed it's the AT545 this transmission is very widely used in school buses. This transmission is a low-powered transmission. It only takes about a 200 horsepower, maybe 230 horsepower max. So it's low-powered. People don't like it because it overheats easily. It's only got four gears. There's no lock-up torque converter. And the gears in this transmission they're really made for stop and go, stop and go. They're made for the city. They're made for a school bus. So that's what a school bus does is just stop and go. So this transmission, it's not great for the highway. It's not great for the mountains. We've been seeing about 2,300, 2,400 RPMs at 55, 56 miles an hour, which is terrible. Next transmission is MT643. These are both Allison's as well as the third one I'm fixing to put up. These four transmissions I have on the board right now, they're all Allison series transmissions. These two series of transmissions, they are mechanical. So here's the part that's gonna answer some of your questions. These two transmissions, this is gonna be your options for a 90s model bus, 80s or 90s. The reason is that they are fully mechanical transmissions. So the engine does not have to communicate with these transmissions. These two transmissions, the Allison 2000 and the MD3060, these two transmissions are electronic and these two transmissions are mechanical. So if you have an old bus, the easiest way to swap a transmission is gonna be a mechanical transmission. So if you have the AT545 and you're looking to convert to one of these other options. This one here is gonna be the easiest or a standard transmission like we have. Our transmission is Eaton, Eaton manual. So our transmission, we've decided to convert from the 545. The option we went with was a manual transmission. After tons of research, I really enjoy the manual transmission. I enjoy the uh, freedom it gives you and I enjoy the simplicity of it. The Eaton manual, the only, really the only three options that it's safe to use is the five speed, the six speed, or the seven speed. But the reason being is because the 10 speed, the 13 speed, and the 18 speed, they're huge. They won't even fit between the frame. So throw that idea out the window. Seven speeds is plenty if you can find an Eaton seven speed, but we have gone with the five speed because that's what was taken out of the donor bus. These two mechanical transmissions, they're both four speeds. The MT643 and the 545, they're both four gears. But the reason the, the MT is sought after over the 545 is because it has a lockup torque converter. It locks up in both four, fourth and third gear. And the gearing ratio is uh, better for the highway. Also, if you have a flat nose, you cannot use a manual transmission. The transmission sits way behind the driver's seat on a flat nose. It sits almost uh, near the first hump. So if you have a rear pusher, or a front engine flat nose. If you have a flat nose in general, you can throw the manual transmission idea 
out the window. You're gonna be looking at one of these options for a flat nose. If you have a dog nose, your options are endless to an extent. So we're gonna stick right here for now with these two mechanical transmissions. So this is everything we've talked about for these two mechanical Allison options. The size difference, another issue you're gonna have with swapping your transmission is your drive shaft. Your drive shaft won't fit nine times out of 10 when you do a transmission swap. During our swap from the 545 to the Eaton five speed, I was able to take many measurements and the Eaton was a half inch shorter than the Allison 545. But we thought this was gonna be just enough room to pull the drive shaft forward. And once we got everything up there, it was about an inch off. So an inch is too much. Anything under a half an inch is it's pretty reasonable to pull that drive shaft forward but nine times out of ten you're going to be altering your drive shaft which should cost somewhere around three hundred dollars okay we're going to move on from these other transmissions for now we're going to talk about the md3060 and we're going to talk about the allison 2000. our choice our first choice when looking at converting from the 545 was the allison 2000. Allison 2000 was the winner because they're widely available. They have five speeds along with the lockup torque converter. Okay, so now with these, I want to make it clear that I have not done a ton of research on this MD3060. I know that it's a push button transmission. Um, they are found in a lot of rear engine buses they are found in a lot of bigger buses. It's because this transmission has a very high horsepower rating. High horsepower, high torque for big buses. This transmission was used in later models buses. I know that I, I have this one marked as a newer transmission, but this transmission, the MD3060, it can be found in late models, but it is still an electronic transmission. From the limited research I do have, I believe that this has an independent transmission computer module. So it doesn't need to directly communicate with the motor, but it needs a computer and it needs a harness. With that being said, both of these transmission options, they need a computer to communicate. The TCM is transmission computer module and TPS is the throttle position sensor. Both of these transmissions, they need to know how engaged the throttle is, and it needs to know RPMs, it needs to know everything about what the engine's doing. So these are a little more difficult to swap over to. If you have one of these transmissions and it's gone bad on you, put the same transmission in, rebuild the same transmission, or maybe get a used transmission somewhere, but don't try to convert it. These are, these are the sought after options. So if you are converting from a mechanical transmission to a newer transmission. So if you are here looking for information on a swap, this is what you need to know. If you have an older bus, if you have a bus that is a 90s or an 80s model, you are gonna need the whole donor bus to swap over from. Reason being, Mostly the 2000, so we're gonna talk about the 2000 because that's what I have the most knowledge in. The MD3060 is kind of alongside the 2000 in its features, but we're just gonna talk about the 2000. If you have a 90s model transmission, and this is gonna stop in 1997, is the cutoff. 98 is when electronic engines came out. If you have a late or an early 90s model bus and you wanna switch over to the Allison 2000, you're gonna need a lot of things. You're gonna need the TCM, you need a TPS, you need the whole harness that connects them all together. And you're also gonna need to somehow convert your motor's computer over. If you're looking to swap over from this 545 to the 2000 or the 3060, you're gonna need quite a bit of things if you are a newer bus, like a 2000, a 98 to 03, maybe 02, this is gonna be easier for you. This is gonna be the ideal transmission for you. Let's just say 98 to 02 year model. 
the Allison 2000 is going to be your best option to switch over because the computer in your bus has options for this transmission. You can reprogram it for this transmission because it needs to know. You're also gonna need to get along with this transmission. You're gonna need to get the TCM and the TPS uh, and figure out a way to connect that to your bus. So a lot of electronics involved. If you have, let's say a 90s bus to a 97. If you have an older bus with no computer, the MT643 is gonna be the best option for you. The drive shaft will have to be altered slightly. I think they're about a half inch off, just like all these other transmissions. If you, for some reason, do not like the MT643, you have an older bus, or maybe you have a newer bus and you don't wanna mess with finding the TCM, the TPS, you don't wanna mess with all these electronics. There is a company out of Florida, they're called CAC Conversions. They guarantee that they can mount and make work any Allison onto any motor. Their most favorable combination is the 12 and 24 valve Cummins. They specialize in the 5.9 and strapping it to any Allison, but their favorite Allison is the Allison 2000. This option is if you have some money because this is not the cheap option. This conversion is gonna cost about $4,000. It comes with a custom wiring harness, custom throttle position sensor, and the computer for the transmission. This is not with the transmission. This is four grand for all the components to make it work. And they claim that this conversion kit is plug and play. So uh, that was an option for us, but you know, we didn't quite have that money. So it became not an option for us real quick. So I will give you another tidbit of information that I learned from CAC conversions. The Allison 2000, if you've done any type of research, you know that some of these transmissions have an unlockable six gear. I say some because not all of them. This feature started in about 2005. This transmission ranges from 2000 year model, which is why it's called an Allison 2000, all the way up to about 2008, 2010, somewhere around there. So 2005, they started with an unlockable six gear. So if you are looking into an Allison 2000 and you're interested in the unlockable six gear, the serial number usually starts with 6310. That does not mean every 6310 has unlockable six gear. This means that it most likely will, but you need to call, call CAC conversions. They're very helpful. They will run a serial number for you any time of the day if they're open. But this was their advice that 6310, in your research, in your shopping, to search for one with the 6310 option, that this is going to be, for one, this is going to come out of a heavy-duty bus, not, a, not just a bus, it's going to come out of a heavy-duty, medium-duty application, as well as most likely having an unlockable six gear. Let's talk about bell housings for a second. In my research, as well as my experience here on the yard, bell housings are very widely different. And sometimes you don't quite know till you get under there what bell housing you have. The three most common are SAE 1, 2, and 3. This is gonna be the most intimidating part because you don't quite know. It's hard to get an accurate measurement until that transmission's off and you can get an actual diameter of the bell housing. So let's just say SAE3 is gonna be the most common bell housing for the 5.9 Cummins. This is the smallest. It's the smallest of the three options because the 5.9 Cummins is the smallest of the motors used in these school buses. So the Cummins usually has an SAE3, which is about 17 inches in diameter. And um, the 5.9 is used in a lot of equipments, a lot of gin sets, as well as the SAE3. You won't find the SAE3 on many vehicle applications because it's the smallest, right? So the other engine options for school buses are a 7.3 International, we have a 7.2 Cat, I believe, Mercedes as well with a, 
another, I think, 7.4 maybe, or another, you know, 7.0, 7 liter motor. So most of our other options for school bus motors, they're going to be mid six liters or well over seven liters, which is a huge motor because Cummins is a 5.9 liter. So these bigger motors obviously have a bigger bell housing. SAE1 is the biggest, SAE2 is the most common. When I took out my Eaton 5-speed, I assumed that the bell housing had an adapter because I knew the Eaton would be an SAE2 and I knew my motor was SAE3. So I thought there was an adapter between the two. Turns out I was wrong. The motor itself, the donor motor that came with the Eaton, it had an SAE2 from the factory. So on my donor bus, that whole clutch housing that connects to the bell housing had to be swapped out because there was no adapter. So this is gonna be the issue. Normally, if you're going Allison to Allison, everything bolts up the same. This is not the case if you're going from a 7.3 to a 5.9. When you are sourcing your donor transmission, you need to find the same motor it came off of. You need to find around the same year it came off of because of this. You cannot get a cat motor with an Allison 2000 and expect it to bolt up to your 5.9 that came off with the 5.45. You need to find a Cummins with the 2000 or if you're searching just for the transmission. You need to reach out to the seller or see in the description what motor it came off of because it's very important, cause you a lot of headache. Another question I have for you, is your transmission dead? Because if your transmission isn't dead, you don't need to swap it. If you have looked up on a bunch of forums and in your schoolie groups that you have the doomed AT545, it does not mean you need to swap this transmission, especially if it's still good. This transmission was made for many decades, was put in many applications. This transmission, it has poor qualities and characteristics, but it's still an Allison transmission. It's still a good transmission. And if you take care of it, it will still last a long time. So don't be afraid just because of what a bunch of people on Facebook say about this transmission. It's not a sought after transmission, but it's not a bad transmission. So unless it's dead, don't touch it. How do you know if it's dead? So if you need to diagnose your transmission, if you don't know its condition, first thing you wanna do is look at the fluid. Brand new fluid is bright red. But the fluid, it's nice and pretty and red. Uh, this looks great. Uh, transmission fluid, if it's got about 100,000 miles on the original fluid, it's going to be dark and it's probably going to be low. But an uh, old trick my father taught me is if you touch the fluid to your skin on the sensitive part of your skin, if it uh, starts to burn, it's time to change that fluid. I believe the intervals to change fluid is somewhere 50 to 100,000 miles. Please don't quote me or at me. I just read the manual for the Eaton and it says to change the fluid every 50,000 miles. Manuals are totally different than automatics, especially newer automatics. These and these, they use different fluid. So just you, just read your, read your manual. You don't have a manual? Look online for a manual. They're, they're there and it'll tell you your intervals. So brand new fluid is bright red. When you get to the point when you need to change that fluid, it still has a red tint, but it's pretty dark. It's not black like your engine oil. It's still gonna have a red tint to it. It's still gonna have a red sheen to it, but it'll be darker because clutches have been working for 100,000 miles. So check your fluid, check the color of your fluid, check the smell of your fluid. And this is all out of the dipstick, guys. So when you smell the transmission fluid after inspecting it, you're really gonna be smelling for something burnt. Burnt fluid is what makes it dark, and burnt fluid is what burns up your transmission. It's hard to describe what transmission fluid smells like. It doesn't have really much of a smell besides, you know, like an oil smell. 
what you're looking out for is the burnt smell. You will know what burnt fluid smells like. It doesn't smell good. Dipstick should have a yellow handle. If it's an older bus, it will probably not have a colored handle, but just a little arm on top of the handle. If you need a little help finding that dipstick to check your transmission fluid, check out one of our videos. We have one of how to maintenance your schoolie and this schoolie has a MT643. Once you inspect this fluid, another trick my dad taught me is dabbing some of this transmission fluid on the sensitive part of your skin. Clutch particles will burn. So if the transmission is bad or is going bad, the first indication will be the fluid burning your skin. This is just a trick. This is not for fact. This is not 100% proven. This is just a old trick that can give you some insight. If you are mechanically inclined enough to drop the pan of the transmission, it's not a huge job. It's not a hard job. The only problem is that it, it gets all the fluid out, which is pretty intimidating. But if you drop your pan, there's a magnet in it and any metal chunks or flakes will be on that magnet. You want to make sure there's no big chunks or slithers of metal. When I dropped my pan, I found slithers of metal. There will be glitter in the pan. There's always going to be some particles of metal, but you're looking for really anything, anything big, anything you can roll around in the tip of your hand, in the tip of your finger. If that piece of metal is big enough to play with and hold on to, it's, it's too big. That doesn't mean you need a transmission swap. It means you probably will, but it doesn't mean right away. So don't freak out. But if you open up that pan and there's just tons of metal in there, I would recommend looking into a transmission swap. If you have come to the conclusion that you want to get rid of your 545 Allison, I'm going to recommend that the best way to swap a transmission is to get a whole donor bus. Why? Let me tell you a little story about how we ended up here. I searched all over the country for the Allison 2000. I was looking for a frame cut unit. This means at the frame, the entire drivetrain is cut out. Right by the transmission, the frame is cut. It's disconnected from the front axle and it's sold with the intercooler, the radiator, the mechanical fan, all the attachments on the motor, as well as the transmission and the motor. This is called a frame cut unit. This kind of ensures you get the wiring harness. This ensures you get tons of parts. And the best part about a frame cut unit, you can find these for two to $4,000 and it comes with a ton of spare parts versus buying just the transmission it's still two to four thousand dollars and uh, all it comes with is a transmission and that's a used transmission that's not a rebuilt or a new transmission so if you go that option you have no additional parts we are a fan of used things we are a fan of cheaper options so i found a frame cut allison 2000 in ohio for thirty three hundred dollars this was 1200 miles from us and the seller was not responsive at all. He would not send me additional photos of the motor. He would not verify parts or condition of the motor. He couldn't even verify that I was in the shop. Yeah. So we ended up here at Interstate Bus Sales, only 150 miles from us. Carl was also hard to get on the phone. It seems to be an industry standard mm -hmm. that of these guys who sell things like this they they're mostly out in the yard they're mostly not around the phone and um they like to deal cash they like to deal with people in person so if you're anywhere close just show up thirty three hundred dollars they wanted for the frame cut allison 2000 in ohio this guy wanted twenty five hundred dollars for the whole donor bus 150 miles from us and this donor bus was identical to ours with an Eaton five-speed transmission. That's why we ended up here 
and uh, this costed us $2,500 for a whole donor bus. Ours was $2,500. You can find a donor bus anywhere from $500 to $3,000. If you are not near the bus, the issue is getting it home and having a place to tear it down and get all the spare parts from it. But if you've got that successfully lined up, this is gonna be the cheapest and best option. It comes with all the wiring harnesses, all the spare parts you could ever need. And you have a whole nother bus, I mean, tires, rims, drive shaft, so many parts that you can get off of a donor bus. Again, if donor bus is not an option for you, you wanna make sure that you're gonna get a transmission that came out of the same year, make and model bus. It's gonna be the absolute easiest swap. Okay, so we're gonna go back just a second to, is your tranny dead? If your tranny is not dead, or maybe you found more flakes than you would like, which is what happened to me, I suggest putting a transmission cooler on your bus. The Allison AT545, it's known to overheat very easily. Also, this transmission, it has a stock transmission cooler. It goes through the radiator. So this transmission will always be the same temperature as your motor, which isn't great because the motor will run anywhere from 200 degrees to 230 degrees, which is too hot for a transmission. You really want your transmission around 160, 180, somewhere, you know, under 200 degrees is ideal. And a cooler transmission will lengthen the life of the transmission. So transmission cooler for your 545 will extend the life, uh, will give you some comfort. But beware, do not use cheap online hoses. It really pays to have permanent hoses fixed and made at a shop. It's probably gonna cost two to $300 for uh, hoses to be crimped in the length that you need. But take it from me, I ordered 50 foot of line with cut to fit fittings. And on four separate occasions, these fittings popped off and spilled transmission fluid everywhere, which is part of the reason why our 545 bit the best. So as for swapping to a manual, like I said, the five, six, and seven speed, they're gonna be the smallest that's gonna fit the best on the back of these motors. The 10 speeds, the 13 speeds, 18 speeds, those massive things. If you've ever actually seen one in person, they, they're huge. And I don't think it would fit in between this frame. I could be wrong, didn't measure, but five, six, seven speed, they're gonna fit. I kind of listed all the things you need to do a manual swap if you don't get the whole donor bus. These are a list of some things you will need to get. The flywheel is different from an automatic. It's huge, it's heavy. Clutch, you never really wanna use a used clutch. You can, but I mean, if it goes bad, you're gonna have to drop the transmission to change it, so. Might as well get that changed, remand. Clutches are good. We chose a remand clutch because it was three hundred and sixty dollars versus like four eighty. Four eighty. We are about three thousand dollars in, maybe a little more. I do have all the receipts. I have not added them up. I would estimate we're about three hundred, maybe thirty-three hundred dollars in on our transmission swap. Thank you for watching this boring video. Hopefully, I have shed some light on your situation, on your plans maybe. Um, if you've liked what I've done here, if you've liked the information I've shared with you, give us a like, give us a subscribe if you haven't already. If you have any questions on what we talked about today, reach out, comment below. We love helping you guys out. If you disagree with something I said here or if you have any additional information, please comment it below because uh, I am not an expert. All of this I have learned in my last three months of research and being here at the yard. So this is a discussion. This is not just me throwing information at you. So read our comments, 
comment, tell us how much you love us, all of the above. We'll see you next week. Uh, hopefully our full transmission swap video will be coming out on our Eaton 5 speed in the upcoming weeks. So uh, like and subscribe to get that notification. Bye.